try the oxygen again. Move your fingers, Mike. He's coming out of... What in blue blazes happened to me? You're gonna be all right now, Mike. You'll be on your feet in a minute. Uh, I seen them sheep down, so I stop. I start through your gate, and all of a sudden, I can't move. Uh, I ain't unconscious. Uh, I just can't move or even talk. We were conducting an experiment. Didn't you see our warning sign? Uh, I just seen the sheep. <laughs> oh, what hit me, Mr. Marsh? What do you got out there? I, uh, I can't say, Mike. It's, it's government work. You'll have to keep quiet, too. See how it is outside. All right, now, let's get on your feet. It's important you don't tell anybody about this, Mike. <laughs> Sheep are up and moving. Well, if it's some kind of secret government thing, uh, but I'd sure like to know what. Oh, you'll find out about it someday, Mike. Now, you shouldn't have any ill effects, but if you don't feel just right, drop by in the morning. All right, Mike, the mail can go on its appointed rounds. Remember, mum's the word. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Mr. Marsh, I was scared sick there for a while. When I saw all the might go down, I thought you had real trouble. I was a little worried, too. You know what we got, boy. A perfect animal test and a human test we never expected. I know. But just the same, I was thinking of that sheep we buried last week. We didn't bury any today. Do you realize that area was hot for more than three hours? That's more than I expected at this stage. What do you do now? Tomorrow, I drive into Los Angeles, see Dr. Ramsey, tell him what we've been doing here. Do you think he will let you go ahead with it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can convince him. If he doesn't have a heart attack first when he finds out what we're doing here. <laughs> So you haven't heard a word from him in the three weeks he's been back at the desert? No, nothing. Of course, I couldn't expect Alex Marsh to drive 20 miles to the nearest town to phone. But a letter he could send. Scientists, pray he doesn't take up golf, too. Buzz the lab so Tom will come in. Something else has been puzzling me, too. Well, what's that? Alex suddenly seemed so anxious to finish his work here with, with Tom on the spray anesthesia and get back to the desert. He never seemed to be that terribly interested in cactus derivatives before. Well, he's isolated some remarkable alkaloids already. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be anxious to finish the work? Well, I don't know, but he acted differently. Maybe I just don't want to admit that I can't compete with a cactus plant. At least I hope it's a cactus plant. Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. What a cushy job you have, girl, getting in the, for the boss at 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm. So far, Mr. Holland, by 11 this morning, I have run Dr. Ramsey's bath, mm -hmm. cooked his breakfast, instructed the cleaning woman, chauffeured Dr. Ramsey to the office, where I shall work until 6, drive Dr. Ramsey home, cook the dinner, do the dishes, and probably take an hour's dictation after that. Now, how cushy a job can one little female mule get? <laughs> well, maybe we can give you a longer lunch hour. 
Yeah, she's off of her feed, Tom, since her boyfriend's back at the desert. You'll have to take her out for an evening again soon. Oh, I woo her ardently, Doc. Every time uh, Alex is out of town. Ha-ha! Dr. Ramsey's office. Alex! Well, finally, where are you? You mean tonight? Well, you better come straight to Dr. Ramsey's house. I'll have Tom there, too. What is it you're so... All right, I'll wait. Oh, we'll see you tonight, then. Bye. Alex is on his way to Los Angeles. He wants to talk to you and Tom. He said he'd get to the house about nine. You might as well come to dinner, Tom. I thank you for your heart-melting invitation. <laughs> well, what's so important that Alex has to see us tonight? I don't know. This is the first time I ever heard Alex Marsh actually sound excited about something. And it obviously isn't me. You know, Carol, anybody who can cook like you deserves the best. Me. You're irresistible, Tom, but I never did know what was best for me. It's half past nine, and Alex is late. Well, personally, I like it just like it is. A nice, cozy threesome. He's here. Uh-oh. Here I go, back in the cold storage. Well, hello. I'm Carol Wilson, in case you've forgotten. I haven't. Just been too busy to write. Hi, darling. Hello, doctor. Alex, good to have you back. Tom? Alex? <laughs> oh, Carol, you're all right. Looks like our boy is really steamed up about something. Oh, coffee, Alex? No, no thanks. I just want to talk. Here. Well, thank you. Well, we've been consumed with curiosity all day, Alex. Talk away. Several months back, Doctor, when Tom and I were in the first stages of your spray anesthesia, working on vaporizing drugs that could be absorbed through the skin, I experimented at one point with a refinement of hydrocyanic acid and pethothal sodium with various catalysts. I came up with a compound which paralyzed rather than anesthetized. A nerve? Gas? Exactly. A paralysant nerve gas. Now, wait a minute, Alex. Our military already has gases like this. Every major power does. You know that. Right. But I have a way to make it an even more fantastic weapon. But... A hypnotic drug such as copolamine, in heavy strength, can be dispersed through the paralysant gas. Then, you have a nerve gas that first paralyzes the enemy army, even the entire population. And upon recovery from the paralysis, the victims remain in a hypnotic state for days, maybe weeks, subject to all orders and suggestions. So you eliminate all resistance while the occupation of enemy territory is being completed. Well, that's very interesting, Alex. But uh, when did our quiet little research lab become involved in uh, chemical warfare? Doctor, do you realize this could be a weapon so powerful it could conceivably banish nuclear warfare? Perhaps, if such a weapon could be developed to that degree. It can be. I'm close to it now. I only have to work out coalescing the drug with the gas. A, a month at the most. Then Tom and I could work in the main lab on the gas persistence. I can see a vapor hanging in the air. Clinging to objects for, for days, like, like radiation fallout. Uh, there's a couple of things that worry me. The desert lab isn't really equipped for experimenting with nerve gases. Well, I work with such small quantities that it's easily handled in our apparatus. Also, you're dealing with unfamiliar elements, at least as far as their reactions on each other. And they can develop frightening consequences. Nobody knows that better than I do, Doctor. Well, it's a project way out of our field, but uh, I think it's worth going after. Let's see what you boys can do with it. Thank you, Doctor. 
Well, uh, I'm sure my presence is no longer required here. We'll, uh, we'll talk more about this in the morning. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Doc. Good night, children. Well, if things are settled for now, I think I'll just sort of uh, run up the beach to my little grass shack. Good night, dear friends. Uh, Sam. Yes. Uh, do you mind if I stay with you tonight so I don't have to open my apartment? Oh, not at all. Do you uh, want me to wait? That's hardly necessary. Alex has his own car. Good night, Tom. <laughs> like I said, good night, dear friends. Good night. Make it early. Now you can talk. I'll at least be happy I'm here. Hey, what's bothering my gal? This nerve gas. What a horrible thought, gassing people. It's somehow immoral. Well, it's certainly better than maiming and killing and blinding and having radiation even affect future generations, which a nuclear war would do. Any kind of war is frightening. And so is the thought of you working with these strange gases. Nothing can happen. I'll bet Dr. Ramsey said exactly the same thing years ago when he was experimenting with live polio virus to find a vaccine. He became crippled for life. But that was years ago. They weren't as careful then. But I'm glad that knowing that you're worrying about me. I even worry about you being alone at the desert lab. But I'm not alone. Carlos is with me. You know, that college boy from Baker I hired last year. Enough about Carlos. Let's talk about us. Except there isn't much us to talk about. You're away in the desert most of the time, and I'm here. Yeah, I know. And I worry with that Tom Holland around. Well, you should worry. He's a very attractive man. I could very easily fall in love with him. Hey, I don't like the sound of that. Well, then you'd better come courting again, and soon. In just a couple of more weeks, and I'll be back at the Institute permanently. Then we can start to make plans. We never have talked about plans. Just what are your intentions, Mr. Marsh? Well, outside of having my own research lab someday, my intentions are to marry the boss's secretary and live happily ever after. I love you. Anything else you want me to do before I go home, Mr. Marsh? Huh? Anything else you want me to do before I go home? Oh, is it Friday already? Man, am I losing track of time. Shouldn't you be wearing a mask? Last time Mr. Holland was here, he said this stuff is dangerous. No, it, uh, it won't emit fumes or vapors unless you're using heat. It's taking longer than you figured, isn't it? You've been at it more than a month now. Well, it's just a question of finding the elements that have, a, have an affinity. Maybe it isn't possible to combine a hypnotic drug with a nerve gas. It's possible, and I'll find the combination eventually. Here, file this with the rest of our failures. Mr. Marsh, did something happen to our other two mice? Found him dead this morning. Some of the gas must be escaping. No, I, I tried one of the compounds on him. Too powerful. I'll be leaving now. Okay. See you on Monday.
Good morning, Mr. Martin. Carlos? You've been working all night again, Mr. Marsh? You should take a rest. Oh, I'm all right. I, I had a little accident. Some of the gas got loose. Oh? What did it do to you? I really don't know. But I had the most horrible nightmares. I think it would have been deadly. I apparently have a built-in protection now. How's that? Well, I probably absorbed so much in my body in small doses over the past several weeks that I have a certain immunity. Just the same, you'd better be careful. Say, have you been in the sun all weekend? You look tanner than last Friday. must have gotten them Saturday. Look how dark they are. Like they're burned or something. I'll get them out. No, don't touch them. Hey.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm hurrying as fast as I can, sir. Yes, sir. Here's your change, sir. Anything else I can do? Good job. What a grouch. Yeah, fill it. You got to Say, uh, uh, check your water and oil. You, you've heard of the Minute Man, haven't you? Well, I'm the 32nd man. Yeah, check it. You got a phone here? Yeah. Uh, we all the modern convenience right around the corner from the garage. Say, uh, is there anything else I can do for you? No, nothing. Some days it doesn't pay to get up. Operator, I'm calling Long, Los Angeles. Uh, Granite 55099. Person to person, Dr. Ramsey. Can I have a 25 minutes for three minutes, please? Yes, thank you, I will. Hello, doctor. Is Carol in the house? Yes. She's going out with Tom, but she's still here. You want to talk to her? No, just listen. I haven't got much time. Something's gone horribly wrong with the nerve experiment. I'm coming into your house. I, I have to stay there for a while. Fix up a room away from everybody. But what is it? What happened? What, uh, what's the problem? I tell you, I'm carrying it on my skin. It's in my whole body. And it's almost instantly lethal. When I get there, don't come near me. Don't touch me. And don't tell Carol about this. Good night, Doc. Good night. Alex? Tom and Carol just left. Now, what in God's name happened? I can't talk anymore. I'll tell you when I get there. I'll be there about 11 o'clock. Four twenty-five for your gas, sir. You don't happen to have any gloves for sale, do you? Gloves? No, no, we don't carry any gloves. Say those to one. Carol home yet. She and Tom went to dinner and a show. I don't expect her much before midnight. Well, I parked my car up the street so she wouldn't see it. Have you got a room ready yet? Maid's room. It's the only one that isn't being used. There were accidents, I tell you. They died merely by contact with me. The immunity I got won't last too long. You've got to find an antidote before this immunity wears off. The first thing we must do, Alex, is to notify the authorities and get you to a hospital. No! Nobody's going to lock me up like an animal. I'm going to stay right here in this room until you cure me. Here's the formula for the last compound. And here's the compound. Analyze it. But you've got to find an antidote, and quickly. I'm not a medical doctor, Alex. And you need the best medical treatment. 
You know as much about chemical formulas as any medical doctor. I can't do it, Alex. Can't do it! I, I just can't sit here and let you die while I'm trying to find an antidote. If you don't do as I say, so help me God, I'll kill whoever comes after me. Whoever I can get my hands on. Carol lives here, you know. Don't tell her I'm sick. Don't tell her the rest. Tell her to stay away from me. And I don't want Tom to find out anything about this. Your face has begun to darken already. I know it. I'm hot all over. My head's bursting. The pain's starting to burn me alive. The turning black may be a form of cyanosis, a diminished oxidation in the blood. I must get oxygen for you to try. Well, why don't you call one of those 24-hour rental places? Good night, Tom. And thanks again for being so much fun. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a servant, ma'am. See you on the morrow. Here's the count. Analyze. I'll start working on it in the morning, Alex. But I, I hope by then you'll realize how irrational your whole idea is. Excuse me, Dr. Bill. Alice! Stay away. Oh, is that any way to greet a girl who thinks... I'm sick. you got to keep away from me. Get her out of here. we better leave. Carol. I just can't believe it. You're not supposed to know about those two deaths. But you have to know that it'll be fatal to touch him. But threatening to kill more people, he must be out of his mind. He is. What with the pain in his body, and the worst pain in his mind, at what's happened. You shouldn't stay here at all. Oh, you need me more than ever now. I have to stay. Oh, dear God, how horrible. Sorry. Coffee break time. I don't care for any. Say, uh, what's the old man up to, anyway? I tried to talk with him. He brushed me off. He's been uh, working away all day in the lab like he's concocting the witch's own brew. I don't know. Well, he doesn't tell me everything. Come on, now. What is it, Alex? What do you mean, Alex? Just a word about him working on that nerve gas now, aren't you? Yes, I guess I am worried. Lucky old Alex. He doesn't know how lucky he is. You know, nobody ever worries about friendly old Tom like this. Well, I'll uh, have coffee alone, I guess. Dr. Ramsey's office. Yes? With the sheriff from where? What sheriff? Oh, the sheriff from that town near the desert lab. Baker. They know about the fire. A mailman discovered it today. I was afraid of this. The sheriff said the body they found was too badly burned to identify. You didn't say anything about it? I told him we hadn't heard from Alex. But what are we going to do? He wants someone to come out there, and he wants us to phone as soon as we hear from Alex. We can't just ignore this. We'll have to ignore it for a while. I have one serum ready, and I'll have the second one finished in a couple of hours. Don't take any more phone calls today. That serum he took last night had no effect on him. I gave him the second one to try, and I'm going to stay here and see if we get any reaction from it. You better run along to the office. We'll have to call that sheriff at Baker today. Well, tell him that uh, we haven't heard from Alex. Say, uh, say we think Alex broke under the strain of overwork, that he may be wandering around the desert somewhere, and ask the sheriff to look for him there. That'll keep him away from us for a while. Doctor, please let me tell Tom. 
You can't handle this alone. I guess we'll have to. Ask Tom to start working on another serum. Alex's experiment book is in my lab locker. And the two serum formulas that I made up are listed there. And uh, tell Tom that he may find some books in my office that might help too. All right, Doctor. Tommy, it's just become a nightmare, a horrible nightmare. Well, this is something we had no business fooling around with. Well, what should we do? What can we do? Well, I don't know. We just can't call the police and have them shot like an animal. We just neutralize that poison in his body. Look, why don't you call the sheriff like Ramsey asked you to? I'll be working in the lab. Alex, it's been five hours since you injected that second area. There's no answer. He must be in the back with Alex. I'd better run over with your serum. You might want to use it right away. Okay, here. And uh, tell the doc that I'm trying to make up some puridine and methiodide. I'll see if I can have it for him later tonight. Huh? Oh, all right. Meet you there, Lieutenant. And look, if he's still in the house when you get there, be sure and tell your men to stay away from him. I'll explain it when I see you. 
I'm on the way. I'm going back with you. No, I want you to stay here. I can't. I have to know what's happened. Okay, come on. Get out on all points on him. But he may still be in the Bay Area. Correct. An all-white station wagon. Check the license registration number under the name of Alex Marsh. You better give this to the radio and TV stations. Tell them to get a bulletin on the air. Anyone seeing this man, report immediately to the police. But under no circumstances, approach him or come into physical contact with him. We haven't got all the details yet. But I've seen what happens when this bird touches somebody. It's mighty scary. I know it sounds wild. I never ran into anything like it. Yeah, right. I'm waiting for the car. Call me here. This guy shouldn't be hard to find if he looks anywhere as bad as that doc's body back there. We'll find him. Let's hope we can get to him fast enough. Can you fill us in on any more details now, miss? Let's get the whole story from the beginning. suspect to touch you. If necessary, shoot to prevent this. Repeat, to all units. Look, Lieutenant, we heard the police call. Dead body. You homicide boys are here. Do you have a murderer, or don't you? I can't give you anything yet. I'm telling you straight. Well, you've a general pickup out on this guy that's loose. What's this jazz about not touching him and, and shooting if necessary? Look, boys, you got to bear with me on this. If your newspapers break a story before we pick this guy up, it could cause a citywide panic. Lieutenant. Mr. Holland. They just got a call on Marsh's station wagon, uh, abandoned in Palisades District. You better ride along with us. Yeah. All right, boys, let's go. Come on. Look, I'll, uh, I'll be back as soon as I can. Where to, Mac? 
I didn't get that, Mac. I didn't realize it was this late, Mac. Uh, I gotta head up for the garage. Uh, you can call from... Get another cab from that phone over there. I don't know what you're saying, Mac, but I can't take you. You gotta get out. Mister, I said you gotta get out. You ain't going no place with me. Now beat it. Come on, screwball. Out of there, I'll call a cop. Tom, I've been waiting for hours to hear what happened. Well, they found a cab driver. Alex must have been there. I guess he got away in the cab. I'm leaving an officer here all night. Marsh might decide to come back here. You never can figure what a man will do when his mind is cracked. Yeah, you're right. Carol, I don't think you ought to stay here tonight. Well, what can happen to me? He's right, Miss Wilson. It would be wise to get you out of here. Look, why don't I stay here tonight? You go up to my place at the beach. I'd feel safer if you were out of town. It's a good thought. I'd do that, Miss Wilson. All right. I'll put some things in a bag.
operator answer. For God's sake, answer. sheriff's office but i don't know the number and i can't get the operator don't talk he might hear you now i'll phone the sheriff myself you ought to be up there in a few minutes in the meantime lock all the doors and stay out of sight i'm on my way up the desk, Alex. I'll read it there. <laughs> Tom isn't here now, but he will be soon. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, stay away from me. Alex, sit down, please, for my sake. Sit down and we'll wait for Tom. You know we just want to help you. You certainly know I do. Oh, please let me, Alex. Please. That's better. That's better, Alex. <laughs> Rubber sheets. 